Hello everyone, welcome back to Naomi's Bookshelf. We are here today to discuss something that maybe is a little controversial, but I feel has been super underrated or super over exaggerated, shall we say, in many Jane Austen circles. And that would be the marriage of Charlotte Lucas to Mr. Collins in Pride and Prejudice. So the marriage between Charlotte Lucas and Mr. Collins is something that everyone seems to think is a bad idea. I personally disagree for many reasons. And on my reread, I took little sticky notes every time something was mentioned in relation to Charlotte's position, getting better, or why she should have married Mr. Collins. So we're gonna talk about these in just a second. But first I want to say that I do not think Lizzie should have married Mr. Collins. Now I know this might come off as Mr. Collins is a good catch, and he is to Charlotte, but I don't think he's a good catch for Lizzie, and I think they just would have hated each other. So I am not suggesting that Lizzie made the wrong decision in this case, but I am gonna suggest why Charlotte, I believe, made the right one. So we're gonna first of all look at the facts of each person in this romantic duo. So we have first of all have Charlotte Lucas. Charlotte Lucas is 27 years old. She is considered on the shelf. She is an old maid by everyone's standards. She is not beautiful by anyone's assessment, not even her own mother. And she is feeling like a leech on her family's finances. So she is in a pickle. Her father did work in trade and he earned his fortune that way, but he is still in trade. He became Sir William Lucas uh, when, I believe the book said when he was a mayor, and that is why he has a title. But he started off in trade, which is important about their family class status. Because of this class status where he earned his way up, their family has very little fortune. The book calls it tolerable fortune. So that could be anything below what the Bennets, I would assume, are making as they are gentry. The next thing of note is that Charlotte Lucas has several siblings. She has multiple sisters and multiple brothers, and this is not a rich family as I have just established. Next, we're going to look at Mr. Collins. Now, Mr. Collins is a young man. He is bumbling. He doesn't understand social cues. I've actually heard that he might have a form of autism, which as of a reread, I could totally see it and understand it. Now, he is also someone who grew up in a very unfortunate home where his father was not very loving and he did not have his mother around. So he grew up in a very unfortunate situation. His college life was not any better. And he is now in a position where he is working for Lady Catherine de Bourgh and he only met her through a small connection and she obviously likes how he flatters her. But he is not someone who has a lot of power or a lot of say in a lot of situations. There are several good points to Mr. Collins in spite of what you might think. First and foremost, if you're looking at marriage as a job, he is a very good job offer. He is in line to inherit a decent estate that is worth 2,000 a year, not bad. Another thing about Mr. Collins is that he is easily influenced into a different opinion. So the first and foremost of this is when he is with Lady Catherine de Bourgh and he says things, comments, and she says, no, that's not right. And he says, of course you're right. And I feel like this is applicable to many women in his life or many people in his life. He also does this with the Bennets during their first dinner at Longbourn when he compliments the potatoes and asks which of his cousins did it. And Mrs. Bennett corrects him. And he says, of course I was wrong. So he is very easily influenced and manipulated in some ways with certain people. So now that we've looked at the two characters in this romantic story, if you want to call it a romance, um, or this marriage, shall we say, we're going to look at what marriage is itself. At least in my opinion, marriage is interesting compared to now. Back then, marriage was a career choice for a woman. She didn't have any many choices. She could either be a governess or she can be married or she could be living at home, bouncing around from family to family. This is obvious in several of Jane Austen's novels. We have Anne Elliot who is not married and yet she is going from sister to sister or family to family and helping out and with different things in the household. So she is not her own person. She is just being bounced around as she is a spinster, according to the family. Then you also have Jane Fairfax as an example, who she is a governess or she is applying to be governess because there's literally no other choice for her to be making money. And you have her aunt, Miss Bates, who is a spinster who never got married and is financially suffering for it. 
Then you have Anne Weston, who I think is an interesting career change, if you want to call it that. She starts off as a governess at the beginning of the book, and literally, I think the first chapter of Emma, it's been a while since I've read it, um, she gets married. And so she changes from governess to married woman, and that gives her a lot more stability in the world's view. The Woodhouses did give her stability as their governess, but she had a lot more long-term stability and she had a lot more long-term connections and support from her family. So another side of this spinsterhood aspect is the lack of a male supporter. So a lack of a male leader or family head, if you will, her father, once he passes away, that would, duty would fall to one of her brothers. And we have seen in Jane Austen's work, a brother who did not take care of his sisters after the death of their father. And that would be the Dashwoods in Sense Sensibility. So you have this possible awful setup that you have, yes, the Lucas brothers could have taken very good care of Charlotte, but there is still that potential where she could be really out on her own after the death of her father. So she has all of these things with spinsterhood attached to it. Something else to consider about this marital society is that many of the men were off in war or were being killed in the Napoleonic War. This is something that isn't really talked about in Jane Austen's work as a big problem, but we do have the militia and in Persuasion we have the Navy through Frederick Wentworth. So we have several army references, if you will, and that also impacts the amount of men who are available to get married to the, to the women around and Charlotte Lucas in this specific instance. So Charlotte was facing a very difficult choice. She had very few options ahead of her and none of those options were really working out in her favor. Now, their family clearly had struggles and had issues with her being single, as I will talk about in a bit. But before we wanna talk about marriage, her marriage specifically, I'd like to talk about her thoughts on marriage and what she actually says to Lizzie about her thoughts on marriage. So in chapter six, Lizzie and Charlotte are discussing Jane's potential marriage to Bingley. And this is where Charlotte makes some very startling and very steadfast views on marriage known. And Lizzie doesn't necessarily agree with them. She says, in nine cases out of 10, a woman had better show more attention than she feels. Bingley likes your sister undoubtedly, but he may never do more to like her if she does not help him on. And that is very reflective of Charlotte in the courtship of, by Mr. Collins. Then they keep discussing it. Lizzie doesn't agree. And then Charlotte says, when she is secure of him, there will be leisure in falling as love as much as she chooses. Now this is something that is interesting because then right after that, Lizzie comments on Charlotte's perspective and she does not agree with this perspective. She says, your plan is a good one, replied Elizabeth, where nothing is in question except for the desire to be well married. But if I determined to get a rich husband or any husband, I'd dare say I should adopt it. So this is something where Charlotte has recognized that being married in good marriage is something that you have to actually work for and you have to show more affection for and you might not love them, but you can fall in love after the fact. This comes heavily into play with her choice of marrying Mr. Collins, I believe. She decides that when Lizzie turns him down, this is a good option. She jumps on that. She's there that day that Lizzie turns him down to support the family and she supports them by taking Mr. Collins out and by supporting him and encouraging him. And she definitely fosters that development of a relationship very fast. She has previously talked to him and she's always been very kind and courteous. So she has not bashed him in any way or made fun of him. And she recognizes that this is a man who she could marry. He is looking for a wife and yet no one wants him, but she can see the value in him. She can see that he is someone who she can easily work with. She can easily control in many ways. He has an estate coming to him. He has a, a good career and he has a good patroness who is willing to pay his way. There are several great options in this. And after their proposal is announced, her family are very happy. It says that her sisters are super excited because now they can go out in society as later we find out from Lizzie's situation that the younger sisters do not go out in public, go out in society for husbands until the older one is married. And so her sisters have been waiting for that marriage opportunity because Charlotte has not been married. Next, you also find out that her brothers are very happy that they don't have to support her down the line. They know that she is gonna be supported 
by a husband. And her father also is very excited for the possible connections that he will bring, Mr. Collins will bring to the table with this family and that Mr. Collins is not expecting a lot of money from him as a payment of marriage. So there are several things that are very exciting for them and they all can appreciate the value, the material value and the social value of marrying Mr. Collins. He is may not be the best individual person, but if you look at the details, he's really a wonderfully possible candidate for marriage, at least for Charlotte in her opinion. I have made several comments about why Charlotte benefits from marrying Mr. Collins and not just Charlotte, but her whole family. And I would like to talk about how Mr. Collins benefits from marrying Charlotte. Now, Mr. Collins is looking for a woman who he clearly states is good with money. She is amiable. She is well soft-spoken. She is someone who he can really work with in the community as a clergyman, which is something very important to him. And I think Charlotte fits that bill. She always thinks before she speaks. She's always very careful with how she does things. But even more than that, you can tell later that when they're in their home, she has really got the system worked out. As we can see from where Charlotte is showing Lizzie around her home, she has things set up in a way that benefits her. She has Mr. Collins working in the garden a lot of the time or in the front of the house and her place is the back of the house. She has a little parlor set up just for her. And I think that really speaks to how she has set this up. I do think she'd have a very difficult time with Lady Catherine always breathing down her neck about what things she should be doing in her life. But I think that's something that is overly, that she can overlook and she can see down the future that that is something that they can change. They can change their location of the job. And right now, if you just look at Lady Catherine as her there, as his boss, that's all that it really is. Now, something else of note is that at the end of the book, Mr. Collins writes to Mr. Bennett and says that they are pregnant. He does not say pregnant, but he does talk about the fact that they are having an extension to their family, if you will. And I think it's very important to notice this because that definitely says that Charlotte has a future locked down at the very least. She has a family and because this estate is entailed, Longbourn is entailed to Mr. Collins, if Mr. Collins has a son, then Charlotte will never have to leave Longbourn ever after they move in. And I believe with a 50% chance of that baby being a boy, she is already guaranteed some sort of future. Now, in regards to love and romance, I think it's possible that they fall in love. I don't know if they would, but I think it's possible. Charlotte Oak went into that marriage eyes wide open, she knew what she was getting into, and I think that's something that's very important to recognize, that she was not a romantic person. As she tells Lizzie after she talks about the proposal, she did not go in there looking for romance. She went in with her eyes wide open to a stable home where she is no longer a burden to her family. I think it speaks volumes to Charlotte's forethought and ability to plan ahead, especially when she knows that one day, her family will have her as a burden to financially support if she does not find a husband soon. Also, I think something interesting of note is that she is two years older than Mr. Collins. And I think that that is interesting because that's not very common at the, in those days. It's something that was not frequently looked on, but because Charlotte is so cunning, and I think that's a great term for her, and I'm saying it in a total complimentary way, she's so cunning, she was able to get this man who was looking for a young, pretty wife, as he had clearly stated before, to fall in love with Charlotte Lucas, who is not young by those standards, and she's not pretty by those standards. I. I really admire her for her bravery. And ever since I first read Pride and Prejudice, I felt this way. So I don't understand why people bash Charlotte Lucas for making the choice to marry Mr. Collins. So this is my defense of Charlotte Lucas. Please leave a comment down below if you disagree or if you agree with me and why. I'd love to hear from you in there about Jane Austen's world and Charlotte Lucas in particular. She is definitely someone who I think is underestimated. I will see you next time with another video. Bye for now.